My name is Matthijs de Blois. I am associated with THINK as a senior fellow, and before that I was a uh, assistant professor at the law faculty of Utrecht University, and before that of Leiden University. And I'm speaking to you uh, about the centenary of San Remo in this year and at the invitation of UK Lawyers for Israel. And I will focus on the idea of the, the settlements or the, the relationship between the very controversial issue of the settlements in, uh, in the so-called uh, occupied Palestinian territories and the San Remo resolution. As we know, there are about uh, now uh, 460,000 Jews living in uh, what is called the occupied uh, Palestinian territories, which in other words, Judea, Samaria, and, um, and next to that are 200,000 uh, Jewish uh, settlers living in uh, Jerusalem, settlers as they are called, but that is the common uh, expression used. And uh, these uh, settlements are a bone of contention for the international world. We have in 2004, the International Court of Justice declared these the settlements to be contrary to international law. And that was uh, also said in 2016 by the Security Council in its resolution 2334. And it was finally said last year also by the Court of Justice of the European Union, which referred to the uh, settlements as uh, being in breach of the rules of international humanitarian law. And the most important argument used is that the settlements are contrary to Article 49, paragraph 6 of the Fourth Geneva Convention, which prohibits the occupying our uh, power to transfer its citizens or, de or transfer or deport its citizens to territory occupied. And since the Six Day War, they say uh, Israel has facilitated the, uh, and encouraged the uh, settlement of Jews in these territories. In the light of all this, it is not surprising that the, uh, when on, in November 2019, uh, Secretary Mike Pompeo declared that the American government no longer considered Jewish settlements in Judea and Samaria, there became, there was a kind of uproar in the international community. So there is a bone of contention, there is a contentious issue, but what about the San Remo resolution in this connection? Let's go back to the resolution and its text. It provides, and I quote, the high contracting parties agree to entrust by application of Article 22 that of the League Covenant, the administration of Palestine to a mandatory to be selected by the principal allied powers, and the mandatory will be responsible for putting into effect the declaration originally made in November 1917 by the British government and adopted by the other allied powers in favor of the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people, unquote. So the San Remo resolution unequivocally expressed the agreement of the high contracting parties, say France, Great Britain, Italy, Japan, to put into effect the Belfort Declaration within the framework of the mandates system of the League of Nations. What started as a unilateral commitment of the British government is now accepted as a multilateral obligation. And the obligation entails the establishment of a Jewish national home in Palestine, while the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish people would not be prejudiced. The expression Jewish national home in Palestine originates from the Basel program adopted by the first Zionist Congress in 1897. The purpose of the Zionist movement was not only to protect the small minority of Jews living at that time in the geographical area of Palestine, which was part of the Ottoman Empire. Its purpose was clearly to cre create a safe haven for Jews around the world who had been and were subject of discrimination, persecution, and annihilation throughout the ages 
Jews should be able to immigrate in Palestine where the national home was to be established. And that is confirmed by the mandate for Palestine adopted in 1922 to elaborate the obligation accepted by the Allied powers in San Remo. And one of the, and this mandate for Palestine is unique in its character because unlike the other mandates of the League of Nations, its beneficiaries, beneficiaries are not only the Jews living in Palestine, but the Jewish people as a whole, wherever they live. Therefore, the mandate in Article 6 provides, and I quote, the administration of Palestine, while ensuring that the rights and position of other sections of the population are not prejudiced, shall facilitate Jewish immigration under suitable conditions and shall encourage in close, in cooperation with the Jewish agency, settlement, close settlement of Jews on the land, including state lands and wastelands not required for public purposes, unquote. Here we find the expression close settlements and makes us think of the settlements we are discussing. It's interesting to note that the immigration and settlement concerns the territory of Palestine, which initially extended from the Mediterranean to the eastern border of Jordan, which, which was uh, restricted due to a uh, provision in the mandate at the request of Great Britain for the territory to the territory west of the River Jordan, so between the Mediterranean and the Jordan. That is the territory that includes Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem. So the whole of these areas, the, the, the right to, uh, to settle is, is valid for the whole of these areas, which are now uh, so disputed and uh, controversial. So, it, but in the light of all this, I can say that the San Remo resolution strengthens the legal positions of Jews who settle down in the original territory of the mandate. Their presence in Judea, Samaria, and East Jerusalem is in that perspective not illegal. And this is true having regard to international law as it stands in 2020. In that respect, I want to refer to Article 80 of the UN Charter, that is the transitional arrangement between the League of Nations mandate system and the United Nations trusteeship system. It provides that as long as there has not been made a trusteeship agreement in respect of a former mandate territory, and there has never been made one in respect of Palestine, and then I quote, nothing in this charter, uh, ch chapter shall be construed in or of itself to alter in any manner the rights whatsoever of any states or any peoples or the terms of existing international instruments to which members of the United Nations may be respectively be parties. So this so-called Palestine clause protects the rights of the Jewish people under the mandate, including the right to close settlement in the mandate territory. And these rights were, as we have seen, already implied by the San Remo resolution. So San Remo helps to rebut loud and clear the dominant idea that the Jewish settlements are illegal. It is a hopeful sign that the peace plan presented by President Trump, and in the, in the peace plan presented by President Trump, the historical and legal claims of Israel in the territories are acknowledged. It also, and I would suggest as a consequence, submits that peace should, demand, should not demand the uprooting of people, Arab or Jew. It means that the international law is no longer interpreted as requiring Jews to leave their ancestral land. That fits nicely the idea of San Remo. Thank you.